Hot Sound School presents Content Heavy, the podcast that helps online business owners make better content and more money. Let's Heavy up. So, you've been thinking about launching your online course, exciting times, but you need a trusted opinion from an expert and from somebody who has done it many, many times. And I am here for you to tell you the good and bad and the beautiful and ugly about launching an online course. <sighs> I'm nervous. I don't know what to say next. Don't you have an outline? I do have an outline, pendejo. <laughs> and you may be wondering, who is this person? If this is the first time you are here with me, well, my name is Veronica. I'm part of the Pod Sound School, and I am the marketing director and content strategies. Online courses is something that we've been doing for three years since we started our business. We have hundreds of students in our classes, and we have a vast experience in epic failures and monumental successes when it comes to online courses. So that's my experience out of the way. I have my Stanley cup and I'm going to have some water. And this is going to be a very interesting chat between you and me. So in this episode, first, um, I'm going to talk about the industry. I think it's important to get an overview of the interest industry that you are about to get into, which is the online course industry and then we're going to move on to the steps of creating an online course there's a lot to cover when it comes to online courses so there will be another episode where i'm going to be getting into other things regarding online courses but this is a good start and i'm excited to be here Let's talk about the industry. First of all, uh, this idea of uh, online courses, of how online courses came about. Well, it started with uh, social media, Facebook and Instagram and how creators on those platforms or people on those platforms, they started to realize that those platforms could be used for more than just posting pictures of yourself and your family and your dog. And they started realizing that they could gather a community that they could grow an audience and that they could monetize that audience by creating courses and sell those courses online. One of the OGs of online course creation is Amy Porterfield. Amy started 13 years ago and she started teaching Facebook and then from there she created her course which is teaching uh, business owners how to create their own online courses. We were students of Amy. We had a lot of fun and a lot of success taking her course. I think uh, that will be one of my recommendations that if you are going to launch your online course, that you just get involved with the people who are teaching this subject. Just get as much information as you can. People who have done it before. Online creators that have launched courses successfully and ask questions and get involved because that's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. Fast forward 2022, this is a billion dollar industry and there's a lot of creators in our space making millions of dollars with online courses they have created. So it's a very good idea that you're thinking to get into the online course business. Now, what are the steps? What's the first thing that you do when you decide that you want to create an online course? Well, first is the idea. It's, it comes, it hits you in the middle of the night or it hits you in the morning after your workout or maybe you're like Studio Steve and just get this rant after his meditations. And another deep breath. But something that we need to remember is that that good idea, that grandiose idea should be solving a problem that your audience has. It should be aimed to, to fulfilling a need or solving a problem. Because the last thing you wanna do is to create a course about something that people don't need. So that's very important. And then the next thing is that idea should be tested with 
real people. You'll be able to refine your information, to refine your course, to refine your framework, and to come up with a way better online course. After you have tried your idea with real customers, then what do you do? Well, you're going to package all of the things that you provided for your client, you're gonna package it into a really nice and flesh out outline and that you organize your information into modules and lessons and phases in a very easy to follow way for your students. And the next important thing is to decide which kind of course you are going to be creating. There are two types of courses, there are many more, but these are the two most popular ones. And one is the self-paced online course. It's self-paced because they are going to log into the platform that you're hosting your course with, and they're going to be watching the lessons on their own, they're going to be their home, doing their homework on their own, and maybe there's a little bit of interaction depending on how you marketed your course or what things you included when you sold the course, but there's very little involvement from your part. And there's the curriculum-based coaching program. This coaching program is something that we are going to be experimenting with and that we're very excited about. Basically, it's the same curriculum, the same uh, thing that you may have going on with your self-paced course, but in this case, you are more involved with your students. You take them from the beginning of the course until the end, and this is a very good idea for somebody, for students who struggle with accountability. You're going to be teaching the lessons, depending on how you structure your coaching program, you're going to be more involved. However, with the curriculum-based coaching program, you can charge a little bit more money because you are going to be involved in the process from the beginning to, to the end. And the last thing that you should take into consideration is what kind of lunch you are going to be preparing yourself for, and it's intense either way. You may decide that you wanna do a live lunch, and live lunches are fun, are thrilling, but there's a lot of stress. We went through a live lunch the first time we launched Smart and Sexy Podcasting, our signature course, and funny story, we sold the course even before we created the lessons or anything inside the course. And that's something you can do, it's called proof of concept. It's a very interesting way to launch a course and you have to uh, act with integrity. The last thing you wanna do is to sell something and not fulfill the promises that you made with your sales page or with your live webinar. So we did that. We put ourselves through the stress of creating an entire module during a week. The course was supposed to be, or was, eight weeks. And during eight weeks, we pull all-nighters. We met with our students. We got a lot of feedback from them. And we were able to add more lessons because we had some loopholes in the outline, which is totally normal too. But as long as you have that communication with your students, you can go and create more lessons or recreate lessons. A live launch has that component. You are going to be launching your course, inviting people to your free webinar so they can come and have a taste of you, a taste of your teaching, a taste of your personality. Then at the end of the webinar, then you introduce them to your program, to your course, and you walk them through all the modules and get them excited. And also it's a good thing for them to know, to see inside the course to see if, if it's a good fit for them. And then the other type of lunch that you can do is to do an automated webinar. And this automated webinar, like the name suggests, you pre-record your webinar and then you upload it to your webinar host and then you have your funnel put in place. People register for the webinar, they attend the webinar, but you're not there present. And then from there they can uh, go to the sales page and buy the course, but this doesn't have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the webinar attendees. Uh, it's great in the sense of that you don't have to 
be there, that you can be doing other things for your business. Uh, you can be involved in other projects and you have this evergreen machine running for you and people attending your webinar. But because you're not there with your audience, your conversion rate, which is to get people to buy your course, is lower than if you do a live lunch which it totally makes sense because you would be there to answer the questions and to build that know, like, and trust factor that needs to be built before somebody makes a decision to pull out their credit card and give you their money. Like I said at the beginning, there's a lot to cover about online courses. This is a subject that I really, really enjoy. We are in the middle of creating or recreating our first online course, Smart and Sexy Podcasting. It's I can talk about all the things that go behind the scenes, uh, the way that we record our lessons, the platforms that we use to do our automated webinars and to hold our course. I can talk about like how it's mentally and emotionally and physically taxing to create an online course. And also I can talk about the great results that an online course can bring for your business. Not only the money, but also how exciting it is to have students and to see them taking your course and to see them succeed and applying the things that you put together for them is absolutely thrilling and fulfilling. And I would advise you to take the leap of faith and start creating your online course. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about the platform that we use to hold our online courses, the equipment that we use to record our courses, and the content that we put into our courses, and some of the best practices for that. And in the meantime, because I know you're going to miss me, you can find me on Instagram at podsoundschool. Also, you can ask me any source of questions that uh, you may have if you're creating your online course. I can direct you to amazing resources. I can give you my advice. Uh, Make sure that you DM me and I will reply to your messages. And before you go to things, don't forget that you are a freaking jefe and don't forget to follow the podcast. Ciao.